we are starting the hard work for this year and this is the first step to train our hearing and I promised to do this series and now we are starting so first uh, let's let's just learn a, a mantra um, I hope everyone has seen uh, the movie Dune in the Dune uh, which is a book written by Frank Herbert and there was uh, several movie versions of it and this one in particular with David Lynch <laughs> that's not David Lynch <laughs> uh, but he's too fear how what the mentat in the movie and the mentats are basically human supercomputers and uh, they can um, set their mind to any task they choose and uh, compute it and come up with the end result and if you are into audio you need to have that sort of focused vision and and the mentats in Frank Herbert's world they had a, a mantra uh, which they used to focus their awareness and whenever they they started to to shift their brain to work in mentat mode in that human computer mode so I modified the mentat mantra for the audio mentat mantra and you can create yours <laughs> this is mine it is by audio alone I set my mind in motion it is by the vacuum tube that driver Konex acquires speed cone excursion reaches X max distortion becomes a warning it is by audio alone I set my mind in motion so it's something very very simple you just focus on audio you set up your time this is my time for audio and and within audio you choose a focus if you are not on a vacuum tube diet maybe you are on a strict JFET diet or MOSFET diet then include that <laughs> in your mantra and um, and uh, include something in it about uh, a process you wish to work on find out what are your limitations when those limitations become a problem and then basically you finish up with what you started it is by audio alone I set my mind in motion so you are keeping focus I know this is not very helpful at all to train your hearing and skills you would think so but and 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 really I came up with this just a, a week ago <laughs> but I can tell you that um, this sort of attitude and mentality really summarizes how I deal with audio and how I have dealt with it right from the start and this is what my mentor was doing and this is what everyone does who is into audio and, and is really serious about it and not just equipment manufacturers but serious audio files and the most impressive thing with a serious audio file is not his audio system but his knowledge and, and, and the way he sets it up, uh, all the details he knows about it, or she, because there are female audiophiles as well, uh, luckily for us, because their hearing acuity is usually much better and we have a lot to learn. So that's my advice number zero for your training, that if you can uh, get the help of, of your girlfriend, wife, sister, daughter, uh, or any female relative or friend or neighbor you can find, then ask them to help you. Ask them to sit down, listen with you, and, and, and ask them what do they hear. And they will hear much more <laughs> than what you do, and they will be able to share uh, what they experienced and then you you can hear you can get more information that way whether your learning process is is on the path or not so let's now take our road to the path 
so when you are becoming a Jedi Master, first you need to become a Padawan or a red shirt uh, or just be <laughs> admitted to Mentat School or pick your favorite uh, hero path. And, and my first lesson in the uh, Audio Padawan School number lesson number one is close your eyes. And when you are listening to music, close your eyes. Because our eyes are the number one problem in our journey to really absorb music. And that's because our vision, it engages 70% of our brain activity. So, so whenever you have signals coming to your body, your, all your senses, your, your tactile senses, your vision, your hearing, your taste, smell, 70% of that, uh, the, of the processing power that deals with everything goes for your vision. And if you shut down your vision by closing your eyes, then you triple your ears processing power. And basically you are tripling your auditory skills. Because it's not just your ears that uh, that are responsible for your hearing. Your ears are just your microphones. So are two built-in microphones. But, and, and they cannot do anything. They just sense frequency and loudness at each frequency. But that's a very minimal information. So to make any sense of that information, to create a three-dimensional space around you, the brain uses analog signal processing, ASP. So not DSP, but ASP, right? <laughs> it's, it's the analog version of digital signal processing. Or I would say DSP is trying to mimic what the brain does. But do not think that DSP is making you uh, making the mu music closer to us, because the way uh, digital systems and computers compute is completely alien to how our brain computes. It's like talking in two different languages. It, it they they won't mix and match. But. It's the brain's processing power that makes sense, puts together the 3D information from two channels of a really simple hearing. And if you close your eyes, you triple that power to resolve spatial imaging, to resolve dynamic differences, to resolve... Uh, um, whether uh, a sound source is coming closer to you, going further away, getting louder, quieter. Is it a person or is it a chorus? Can you hear several voices in the chorus? Just close your eyes and, and you will be able to hear much more detail, uh, much lower into, into the uh, information and music. And I, this is the number one core rule that I recommend to every audiophile is close your eyes and listen like that. Because that will open up your hearing and your skills for serious listening. When we have our eyes open, we are in the kid in the candy store mode. Uh, what focuses your your attention will focus on the audio equipment in front of you, and and if you really like it, you will be oh my god, these are big speakers, you know, like uh, 500 kilograms each or a ton each or whatnot. They they cost like 150 thousand dollars. Wow, I wish I could have speakers like that. Your mind is in a monkey wheel. Or if you are at home and you are listening to your bookshelf speakers, then I, 
I recall my own audio, audio journey. And that's what happened to me. I was listening to my smaller speakers. Uh, and uh, in the beginning, I had just a really basic set of two-way Sonys. And, and I used really crude things to uh, soup them up, to tweak them, <laughs> like placing a brick inside the cabinet to make it less resonant. Yeah, that worked, but that, that's how I started. And, and, and then when I was listening to them, I think probably about 70 times, 70% 70 of the time I was listening to them, I was thinking about Ooh, how the sound will be when I have a decent pair of speakers. And, and if your brain is occupied with that type of thinking, that if I change that, then it could happen. If, if I bought that, or if I would trade my equipment, I've seen this on Craigslist or whatever, cut the crap. Close your eyes and get rid of that nonsense. Think about that in your spare time, free time, whatever, but not while listening. If you want to be a... Uh, so right now you are a Padawan. If you want to be a Jedi Master of audio, then you focus on music and uh, what you are listening to. And, and you are not playing uh, mind games. You focus on the sound. And, uh, and then you will be able to make a connection with the sound, connection with the music at a much, much deeper level. And, and I recommend this because uh, I discovered this process myself. And I started using this way before my audio journey. I, I, I automatically do this since my early childhood. If when I go to a concert, I close my eyes. And, and then I can really absorb the performance. And, and it gets 10 times deeper compared to open eyes. You can go really, really deep with close eyes. And do that for live concerts as well, live events. And that's my advice 1.1, is that when you go to a live event, also evaluate it from an audiophile perspective so that you have a reference. That when you go home, listen to a recording and you can compare. So when you are at a live event, listen for the room acoustics. What, what uh, I used to do and what my mentor used to do when we went to concerts is we used to just walk around in the symphony in the... Uh, uh, and uh, check out different seats. So when there was, uh, and how uh, the sound was coming from the different seats. And even if you just walk into, uh, into the concert hall and, uh, and the band is not playing yet and you just listen for the echoes and, 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 and what is the sound of people just murmuring and talking and as you are walking about, front row, back row, middle, whatever, you can hear that uh, the murmur changes. And, uh, and listen for that. How does that sound? And then sit down in that row. And then when there's an intermission, pick another seat and sit there if possible. <laughs> if there's a full house, you can do it. But uh, here I rarely seen a full house, and you can always move around. And uh, if you don't want to move around, like many rows back and forth, if you can laterally move in the, in the concert hall, maybe like two seats over, your next seat usually sounds very close to yours. But if you move three seats over, chances are that uh, you are going to have a quite uh, a significant or maybe even drastic or dramatic change in how it sounds. And uh, if you are conscious like that, when you go to a, listen to a symphonic orchestra, then you will realize how futile it is that some, when people are talking about, 
oh, this is a perfect imaging of a symphonic orchestra because, hey, uh, which listening position? <laughs> Uh, because uh, if if you pick different seeds, there's like a hundred completely different sounds within the same symphony hall, and and even if they record the music in the same symphony hall, the microphones are going to be something like fifty feet from each other, and at positions where there is no listener, and there's not a single human being who has a fifty feet wide head. So whatever the microphones are picking up, not a single human ever hears that. So we have no idea what the microphone picks up. Because it's, it's not whatever it, it picks up and how the space is formed for the microphone. It's completely different how our brain interprets that. So at this point, just close your eyes and do your best to focus on the sound, absorb the sound, and you will notice that uh, whatever seems really hard with your eyes open, it becomes much easier and becomes a second nature when you close your eyes. Advice number two, choose references. Pick two or three of your favorite recordings that you really like, and and use them as reference. Uh, for example, these two have been mine. One of them was the uh, Cantate Domino and the other Jazz at the Pawn Shop. And these two CDs, they, they followed me through my entire audio journey. <laughs> and then I listened to them on everything, everywhere. Um, and, and that's a really good practice because you have a reference uh, to hear how different systems react to the same music. However, I also advise you to be more free-spirited than that because this is the really old-school thinking that you have few reference recordings and that's the only thing that you use uh, to test any systems. And that's really bad. And now I show you the failing of this. So for example, with mine, my selections here, the problem was, look at that, these two recordings are both from the same label. They are both from the Swedish Proprius label. So it means that if I use this and optimize my system uh, so that these recordings sound the best, then I'm optimizing my system for proprious label. And there's a really good chance that uh, it, it will really skew and distort how my system sounds. So, uh, so I really advise everyone to, when you pick your selection, your list of selection, pick, pick really diverse recordings. Uh, for now, only that, but I'm going to make a video on uh, recommendations for a couple of CDs that I can recommend for you to use as uh, your uh, reference material. And then I also give a list of considerations how to choose references. And for now, for the Padawan Beginning School, my third advice is lower thy volume. So whatever volume you are listening to your music, turn the volume knob down. And that's really, really critical because uh, today we are in the middle of, of a really silly loudness war. Everyone is cranking the volume up. It, it, it doesn't help anyone, especially if you are in the beginning of your audio journey. Oh. If you, okay, I tell you a story. It is, and if you are a musician, then all, all the musicians know this. And I want audiophiles to know this fact as well. So the louder you play something, the better it sounds. And that's why uh, when you are in showrooms, 
they crank the blip out of the volume pot because uh, when, when the system is played very loud it will trick the brain and tell it that oh this sounds really good uh, and, and that's how musicians operate. Probably you have been wed to weddings where they have really bad bands because they are cheap to hire. And, and the worse the band is, the louder they play. Because uh, it's harder to notice that they are playing really bad if they play loud enough, right? Especially after a wine or two, who cares? It's loud enough, it's good enough. Of course, if you are a musician, right away you can hear that these guys suck wind. But if you are not a musician and they play loud enough, hey guys, they are going. That's perfect. And the same thing with stereo systems. You can tell much more of the sound if it's not playing too loud. And there is another thing. Uh, is that many systems really fall apart when, when you are playing them quietly. And that's another reason why in the showrooms everything is played at a super loud volume. And then it's, of course it's really impressive. If it's too loud, it's, it's very impressive. But you will not be able to listen to it at home at that volume all the time because that would give you a permanent hearing damage. You have to crank the volume down. And, and the same thing goes, if you are in a showroom, ask the seller to take the volume lower and listen to the system at uh, different volumes. It's a good idea to listen to it at a loud volume to see how much distortion the equipment has, how much uh, extra uh, dynamic handling it has, how much power reserves it has, but you want to check it out at a level where you want to listen to it. And uh, the longer your listening sessions, the quieter you want to play it. If you listen to your stereo once a month for 15 minutes, maybe you are super busy, and that's all the time you get, then yes, you can crank it up. Because then you will have an entire month for your hearing system to recover. But if you are listening to your stereo every day for three, four, five, six, seven hours or more, yes, there are people like that, I'm, I'm like that too, then you really have to learn to live with a lower volume otherwise your hearing will go out the window and through the years you will be able to hear less and less and less and you will not be able to enjoy the spoils of uh, of your audio development because short, in in 20 years maybe 30 years you will need hearing aids and uh, and then doesn't matter what kind of stereo you have you will hear hearing aid quality. So thank you for uh, tuning in and let's repeat our Mentat Mantra that it's by audio alone I set my mind in motion and uh, let's that be our guiding instruction. And I hope these three advice help, will help everyone and thank you like and subscribe to help your fellow audiophiles on your on their audio journey thank you bye bye